Hi everybody and welcome back. Alright, in this video we are going to show you how to save your player data and then when they return to the game uh, it will load their data back in. So data scores uh, for some uh, people can be a bit scary um, and seem complicated but we'll create a very simple version that you can use um, straight away. Alright, so come over to service script service and open up your main script and this is where we're going to do the work. Now there's a couple of things before we get started on the coding. The first thing that you want to do is come up and click on file and save your file locally. Alright, then in order to make data stores work we need to change some game settings and it happens on the server so come up to file again, click on file and come down and click on publish to Roblox. So when you click on that you will have a window like this come up. So you can uh, type in here um, my tile game or, or some other creative idea um, uh, to, to name this this project. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, actually I'll do it. I'll do a new new place so you can see how it works. All right. So um, I'll say testing my tile game. Right, uh, a game that uh, lets players level up by jumping on different uh, coloured tiles. All right, you don't officially have to type a description in, but it's probably a good thing to do. And the only other change you really need to make at the moment, if you're not working with other people, just um, turn off Team Create, um, and when you're you've got your name, come down and click on create at the bottom and give it a few seconds and you should get a confirmation screen that pops up to say that your your project has been saved and it's created like this. So testing my tile game successfully published you may find this place in testing my tile game and I'll show you where to find that shortly. Right, so click on close and now uh, if you click on the home tab over on the right we have game settings so go ahead and click on game settings and there's a whole bunch uh, we start off with what you just saw just then and you can look through each of these to, to see uh, what uh, you want to change but the one thing that we need to change uh, in security so click on security is to enable studio access to API services Enable studio access to game services such as data stores, which is what we're going to use. So click this so that it turns green and then come down and click on save. Alright, and you should see in your output window that you have your local save and then it says published to Roblox and it's changed up here, alright, to place number 24. So that means that we've we've placed a version of our project onto the server and that's where our data stores will happen. All right, so to begin using data stores at the top of our main script, so just below our, our fun mod here, we will get the service that's required to run data stores. So local DS for data store service, local game, get service and data store service. Then right below this, we'll create a variable uh, PLR data, so for player data, and we'll enter, I'll just get rid of these windows for you. All right, data store, data store service, and then a colon, and get data store, and inside of here, uh, add a set of inverted commas. Now, what this will do is, um, it will attempt to get whatever named data store we put in here. Now if it if it discovers that that doesn't exist then it will create a data store for us and save it back over here for each player. All right now there are different ways to use data stores but we're creating one for each player in this, this um, circumstance. So come up with a unique name to call your data store in here. So you could call it my player um, or my tile data um, you could call it banana um, just use something that's unique and then put an underscore with 
0.0.1 so that you have versions in here. So whenever you change a data store, um, what's going into it, sometimes you want to reset your data store because uh, things have changed and uh, in order to get it to work properly, you need to reset it back to scratch. So start off with one, and then if we have problems, you can go to two or three, etc. All right, so that's all that we need to do at the top um, in terms of getting our data store set up. Now we'll scroll down and look at your variables. Now the things that we want to save will be our points, our level, all right? The player color doesn't need to be saved because that changes. We want to save our goal and we don't need to save the head color. So we're only saving the level goal, the level and the points. All right. So it's good to make a decision about what you're going to save. All right. So just below this function here for our changed and inside of these two uh, ends here with the brackets, add a, a comment and a bit of a heading to say this is where data stores is going to happen. All right, so any code inside of here applies to data stores so that you know that that's what we're using it for. All right, so it's a fairly logical process when we use data stores. Uh, we're going to create a, uh, a variable called data and its first job will be to try and get any data that is in the data store for the player. So we'll say player data, which is our variable at the top, colon, and then we type in get async. All right, so get async is a network call, which means it goes to the server and it's going to look for the key to the, um, to the data store that we want to try to get access to. And the key we're going to use is player.userID. Okay, so that uh, comes in as a string um, and it's uh, like a list of numbers that represents your player in Roblox. So just below this, if um, we will put a conditional statement. So we want to know if data all right, is not equal to nil, so remember that little squiggly line is next to the one with the shift, then, all right, so if it's not if, if it's uh, not equal to nil, that means that the player has data, all right? And we can put in uh, print here, player has data, all right, just to test that. Now, we'll add an else statement here, else, so if it comes back as nil when the player joins, that means we have a new player, all right? So we can say print and new player. Okay, so that is enough to just test to see that this works. So let's click on file and save and also file and publish to Roblox. We'll open up our output window and I'll just clear everything that's there and let's play. And down the bottom here, you will see that we have new player has popped up. All right. Now, if we stop the game and let's play again, then you should see that it will say new player. All right. Now, the reason for that is because we're not saving anything yet. Nothing has changed on the data stores. So it just keeps coming back as new. All right, now what we'll do is we will create for our new player first um, the default data that we want to save. So just underneath our new player print statement, we'll say data, all right, since it's equal to nil, we'll create a table and we're going to add in what we want to save. So in this case, it will be, we'll put square brackets with quotes, points, all right, we'll equal whatever the default value is. So we've said zero. And then the next one will be uh, our level. And level one is where we start our player. 
and just below this our level goal right and we started off at 50 all right so that is the default values that we're going to save for the player so next what we want to do is save that data to the data store so type in here we're going to add two variables success and then a comma and then error equals and a special uh, function it's p call all right and then open a set of brackets function so an anonymous function and then drop down a line so it looks like this so what a p call function does is any code that runs inside of here if there is an error or something doesn't work then it simply gives a message back to this variable here but doesn't stop the script uh, running so instead of if it if it said no i can't save the data it would break the script and the game would stop running but this p call here handles that error for us and we just put one line inside of here which is player data and we say set async so instead of get we're, we're now saving and we put in our key which is our player.user id and the data we want to save which is the data table all right and it will go about trying to save this so to find out whether it was successful or not just down below we can say if success then print data saved for new player else and we'll give a give ourselves a warning right and we can say new uh, player data save failed and then a comma and the error so it will give us an error to give us an idea of what went wrong if anything goes wrong now once this has been saved and we try to load again up the top here instead of just saying a player has data we could now print uh, data to see if uh, what data had been saved all right so we can click on file and save and now let's play all right so down the bottom we see we get our message new player and data saved for new player so now this time when we click on stop we will play again and you should find that we're no longer a new player and we get this message instead player has data and our table and if we expand our table you'll see we have saved our table of data to the data store all right so that's our default data setup for our new player the next thing that we want to do is to um, before we save it during the game we want to get the um, the data back out um, of the data store when a player joins the game so up the top here just below where player has data we're going to set the values up above so we'll say player points dot value equals and then we'll access the data table that we're getting back and points all right so no commas between the ends of these these are just single lines but you do one for each um, variable so value will equal data all right and level and then level level goal dot value will equal data level goal <coughs> excuse me all right so that will get our players data back out but at the moment there's no point in testing because it'll just simply say the same thing um, let's now come down and we'll write the code that will save data when the player leaves the game so right at the end um, just after uh, still inside of our data line here but after the last end all right we'll write a special closing function so this will be game 
dot on close equals and then function and drop down and it should look like that okay and inside of here we're going to do something that's very similar um, up here to this section here so what I want you to do is in the new player section take a copy for, of the data and all of this down here so we're copying that whole section there and you can right click on it and copy and then come down into the on close and paste it in but in this case instead of saving our default values what we want to do is save our values so we'll say player points dot value and for our level we'll say player level dot dot value oops and for our goal level goal uh, dot value all right and it's going to save and then we just change the message down the bottom instead of new player data saved for player all right so it's a little bit different and we can just say down here player player data save failed all right and that is it so let's click on file and save and then file and publish to roblox and then we'll play all right and you should see yes the player has data and it set us up with um, our default data down in the output window so now we want to change some values so let's run over and jump on here and we'll get some points we might try to uh, get to the uh, the second level perhaps all right whoops I missed that one okay we'll jump up here and we'll run over and get red this time and I've gone up to level two uh, maybe I can get more points back over here so now I've got level two and 40 points all right so let's click on stop once you've changed a couple of things and down the bottom you should see data saved for player so let's go ahead and play again now and over here if you look up here you should see that I've got my 40 points back my level 2 is back and if we open up our data you'll see that it was saved and our level goal is now 100 all right so hopefully you're getting that result uh, and if so then uh, everything is working fine and we can um, we can stop the video there stop the game and um, I will see you in our final lesson where we will add some sound effects and music to finish off our project so I will see you there